What's going on, Flood Nation, and welcome back. Today, we have another installment of what has been an amazing series of interviews with Mike McGlone, a senior commodity strategist over at Bloomberg. He's going to give us some extraordinarily bullish breakdowns on what's currently happening with Bitcoin and how he believes it's becoming true gold, digital gold in the world. This is the situation we've long dreamed about as Bitcoin bulls, and it's amazing to now hear Mike explain how this is happening. You guys are not going to want to miss this episode, so please strap in for an amazing interview from Mike McGlone over at Bloomberg. Before we get into this video, I just want to say if you're excited, please go ahead and like this video. It really helps the channel out and lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying the content. Thanks so much, and we'll get to the video right now. What's going on? How are you doing? Mike McGlone over there at Bloomberg HQ. How's everything going with you, Mr. McGlone? It's all good, Elio. It's good to see you again. Good to speak to you. I've enjoyed some of your videos in the last uh, month or so since we've spoken. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much that you're following the channel. Uh, so much to talk about. This uh, Bitcoin, I guess we could call it the Bitcoin industry right now, has been absolutely on fire. Uh, what's going on, I guess, from your perspective over there? Uh, I know that when we talked starting out uh, back in November, that was really as Bitcoin was putting in a bottom, uh, really starting to show it probably the most weakness it's shown. And uh, since then, it's been exceptionally strong. Uh, what do you make of all this? Are we looking at a turn from a bear market to a bull cycle? Are we looking at just a bear market rally that's been extended? What are you seeing? What What are the charts telling you over there at Bloomberg? What's How do you make? What do you make of all this Bitcoin? Stuff? I look at it right now as simple bear market retracement, and I say that because Bitcoin is meh so far this year. All it's doing is retracing last year's bear market. Now I'm bullish Bitcoin, but I'll get excited. I mean, when it's it, when I guess I should say more if when it sustains above nineteen thousand, and it's not doing that yet. So I look at gold; it's a six-year high. Now that's something significant. But Bitcoin is it's going up. It should continue to go up. I think the significance of this year, it's becoming much more. Obviously, all no institutions are involved, but much more actual digital version of gold and um libra helped you know accel accelerate that trend and i expect that to continue as you know we even mentioned earlier is just what's happening in the global macro trends with negative interest rates inverted yield curve fed easing bitcoin's right there in the forefront and guess what it's newer and it's has a t history of appreciating more than most other assets so i don't see what's going to really make bitcoin stay lower but i can see a lot of reasons for it to continue to appreciate Okay, okay. Well, that's a change of tune, I think, from the last time that we had you on. Um, so why don't we just start right at the top? How do you see this as a bear market retracement? Let me explain that to the audience if they're not familiar with that term. And, and maybe, yeah, you can pop into the, uh, the chart view and show us a little bit more about what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I always like to speak from a standpoint of a, a chart because a lot of times when I do my research, it's funny, I'll, I basically write to a chart. <laughs> it's funny. Mm -hmm. um, um, and as far as bear market retracement, look at it this way. Last year, Bitcoin went from basically 19,000 down to 3,000. Um, and now it's just retracing that bear market. So we had, what, an 80% drawdown? Um, yeah, correct. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I look at here, so I can show a quick chart on it compared to gold. I'm going to show you a bunch of other charts. But um, when I write about things like that, it's, um, you look at Bitcoin, it's, it's uh, it's like an inside. I look at it as an inside year, meaning last this year so far is traded within the range of last year, and the year before. Uh, I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna go to that one. Year before was um, within the range of the previous year. So here's what I sh that's what I show in this chart here, and that is Bitcoin. And, and please in, maximize these charts if you can. Yeah, there uh, you go. That's right. Yeah. As well, much as how, how's that look? Perfect. Yeah, okay. there you go. Awesome. So in, you see in gold, you see gold, it's a six year high. Now as a strategist, someone who's predicting that, I can't, I don't want to mention how long I was predicting that, but <laughs> finally it's happening. You know, we have to be honest. Um, you can see, yeah, it's six year high that matters. Bitcoin last year traded within previous year's range and this year it's still within last year's range. That's a consolidated bull market, but it's really from a breakout standpoint, it's nothing, it's meh. It's nothing exciting. I mean, it's exciting for those who held on, um, but that I expect to continue. And I, you know, that's what I mean by bear market retracement. It's nothing new yet. Now you sustain above last year's highs and the highs before 2017. Now you have, then you have something as a strategist to talk about. Gotcha. Um, so potentially it looks very bullish in the context of non-correlated assets like gold and, and other things that do well during recessions as it's uh, newer, as you said. 
But at the same time, by the way, I want to interject if we didn't introduce Mike properly. He's a senior uh, commodities uh, trader over there at Bloomberg HQ. Did I, did I do that intro properly? Good enough. I'm a strategist. So that's the unique thing about my position. I'm a former trader. Form, and I have, versus most people you'll hear in this space, I have no vested interest in this space. I own some peripheral small amounts of Bitcoin and cryptos. But my main vested interest is getting markets right. And that's all commodities. So if I consistently get it wrong, then I have a problem. But I don't have a vested interest, which is unique. And I think that's one thing your viewers should remember when you're talking, listening to someone who's long a lot of cryptos, of course, they're going to have a bias to be bullish. My bias is just getting markets right. And it's sometimes more trading and orientated because it's a trading market. Yeah, and I, I think that's very important is to uh, understand uh, the, the creator of the content. I'm obviously very transparently long a lot of cryptos. I believe in the movement. I try to educate about the technology. But I also like to defer when it comes to chart analysis to uh, people like Mike. And of course, uh, someone I like to bring up a lot is uh, my buddy Crown over at Crown's Crypto Cave because he plays options. So he's happy to short. He's happy to long. He's happy to do all kinds of derivative options. That, that makes him a dollar. And it, he's pretty agnostic about direction as well. And so that's something to keep in, keep in mind as well. So thanks for that intro. Let's move along here. Well, just one key thing that really attracted to you, uh, me to what you wrote well, last year is I knew you were long, but yet you were bearish. I highly respect that. I used to be in a trading pitch, and I remember when you tell a customer not to do a trade because your job is to gain commissions from trades, they gain a lot of respect for you. So that's what really helped. And I also like what uh, I, you, um, what Crown and you do together because I'm a former options trader, and you can see I used to have hair too. So I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to go back to that. So I just say it. I don't have to. I don't have to do it. Yeah, no, I, I, options uh, trading seems like it's a full time, very stressful, uh, very stressful lifestyle, which maybe I'll, I'll get to a little later on. Uh, but at any rate, uh, yeah, I, you know, there's a responsibility when you're making content. I'm sure many of you have seen videos where I get excited about a coin and I say something at the end like, I don't know, I'm still sizing up a position or I have taken a very small bite. And then I'll see people that comment, I've gone all in, I went all in, you know, spent, spent a lot of money. And there's, there's a sense of responsibility where I, I don't want people watching my videos to lose money. I want everyone to make the most money. That's my goal. Uh, so, you know, obviously not financial advice, not a financial advisor. But anyway, I think today's going to be really awesome. I think right now is an interesting time uh, as we look at uh, Bitcoin really turning into what Mike said, which is digital gold and how gold has played a role in recessions throughout history is something I want to focus on as there's a lot of sort of glaring signs of recession kind of staring the economy in the face as they have been for some time. But I think they're potentially even more glaring now than they were over the past sort of uh, 24 months or so. So true. And uh, I mean, that's been my first kind of connection being a commodity guy to Bitcoin was gold because I viewed it as similar and it's becoming more so. So one thing I did a really recent, recent bid on was um, this this um, thing you see, uh, this report, it says it's different this time, a bidding Bitcoin gold relationship. And I did that intentionally because it has been different. And my, what I mean is the relationship between gold and Bitcoin isn't increasing by relationship, um, the key way to watch things like this is beta. And by measure of beta for non-financial people is when, see, Bitcoin goes up um, 10% and gold goes up 5%, that's a beta of two. It's going up two to one. So historically, there hasn't been on a 200-day basis, which is what I show you in the chart, which Crown probably looks at, traders look at this. There hasn't been really much relationship on a 200-day basis between gold and Bitcoin, but now it's the highest ever, almost 1.8 times. Bitcoin typically has been running on a 200-day basis, has been running, moving 1.8 times that of gold. Now, obviously, gold's making new highs, but to me, that's part of what's happening this year with lower interest rates, um, the propensity for the rest of the world to cut rates, the Fed cutting rates this week for the first time in 11 years, um, and potentially increasing stock market volatility. But that's another story. It's just this, to me, is part of what's differentiating Bitcoin from the rest of the space. It's the macro implications, and there's only one Bitcoin. I mean, there's a lot of copycats, and everybody knows there's only one Bitcoin that's increasing its attraction. Uh, and I appreciate that. I know that at the beginning of our conversations, you were uh, sort of reluctant to say that there was a, uh, a real supply limit. But I think it is over time become clear that uh, the market does clearly indicate that there is one coin that they are spending their, their fiat currency on. There is one coin that they were very invested in and that uh, that for sure is Bitcoin so far. That's you know where everybody starts with their US dollars or, or their fiat. And uh, I definitely think that that trend will continue to be the case where there will be other coins. But as far as the, the digital gold that we're talking about, it's just BTC. 
Well, definitely, and and more so every day. And then you hear from institutions. I can show you. you now we all hear about institutional interest. I like to say, well, well, here's where's the beef, and the good way to detect that is futures open interest, open interest in futures. It's you know moving from the lower left to the upper right. And I'm hearing it. I mean, obviously hear the stories, but anecdotally and from money managers I know that yeah they're all looking to get involved in Bitcoin, not as for transactions like they like to get involved with gold. You know, buy it as a diversifier, add it to a portfolio, expect it to be a sound store of value and money. And, you know, that standard I'm hearing, as I'm sure you've heard, is 1% of your on your um, investment um, portfolio. Yeah, uh, 1% certainly uh, limits your risk completely. And uh, at least, especially for these money managers that you're talking to who probably m manage uh, very large sums of money. And 1% for them is is market moving in our industry. And so that's pretty interesting stuff. And obviously, you'd consider these, uh, these big investors some of the most uh, sophisticated as well as some of the most risk averse, uh, which is amazing to hear them wanting to get involved uh, in the Bitcoin industry. I, to me, this is the institutional herd we've been hearing about. All of this sort of rhetoric we heard uh, throughout 2017 and 2018, it seems like now is really the moment where institutions are actually uh, starting to open up the pocketbook. That's certainly the case. And, you know, we just lay, it happened last year. We just needed, and recently, we just had to get through that flush of the massive speculation. And you mentioned that this is a shift for me. I really shifted bullish the minute Bitcoin sustained above 5,500 with the issue, which was right around May, early May, when, um, you know, we had this Libra thing come out because Libra was a systematic risk. I'm sorry, not Libra. Um, it was uh, Tether. Remember the issue? accusations of Tether and New York Attorney General. The yep. minute the market got over that and Tether cap market capitalization just jumped, that was a sign that, okay, there's one systematic risk the whole world was worried about that's passed. And and we broke above significant technical levels. And then I track everything else. That's what turned for me. And now I just keep moving my support level higher. Initially, it was 6,500. Now I say 7,500 is levels I don't want to sustain below and you want to look to buy dips near those levels. Yeah, and it seems like we certainly might be looking at an opportunity to buy those dips, uh, so kind of staring us in the face. Uh, I guess what I want to ask you is, what do you what do you see as the current sort of? I know last time you had defined the Bitcoin uh, bear trend as or the bull trend as moving between six thousand ten thousand. Then we kind of bust through ten thousand with a vengeance, um, almost you know I guess touching fourteen thousand almost. And now we're here uh, at about 9,500 last time I checked. Uh, what do you think is in the sort of short to midterm outlook for Bitcoin? I know you don't like to do a lot of uh, tremendous uh, price speculation, but what do you think is a short to midterm outlook? And then, of course, I want to dive into uh, inverted yield curves, uh, potential for recessions and what that could mean for both gold and Bitcoin. Well, I appreciate the question because I, I virtually ignore daily charts because just a lesson that I've learned the hard way, it's a good way to lose your hair. Yep. And I, I think from our and your viewer standpoint, which might not all, you know, could be more global, is focusing on um, the big picture trends and bigger picture levels and trading less and being more responsive investor. So my thought is any dips, you know, I guess it's in your current levels and below or you should be looking to be more aggressive in a buying standpoint. Any rallies potentially above. I I still think we you know probably should get to near nineteen, twenty thousand. I just don't know when. And that's why I show in this chart is the key support now and that's been really good resistance and support historically is a twenty week moving average. So that's trending higher. It's seventy around seventy eight hundred now. So it was seventy five hundred last week. Yep. Um and also what I show in this chart is this is futures open interest. If you want a direct physical representative institutions getting in space and the potential for ETFs to be approved, I mean, why not have an ETF that tracks futures? You got the open interest, you got the volume. This is a regression line on that. It's showing a bit of a support now for Bitcoin prices. So I see dips near 7,800 is pretty good support. Don't want us to stay much below that, but markets don't make things easy. If they do, something's wrong. And the trend's your friend, and that's up. Yeah, the trend is definitely our friend uh, this year. Was not our friend last year, but that's okay. Moving on. So that, that yellow line, in case you're uh, not following right here, this sort of jagged yellow line uh, is the aggregate total interest in futures, which of course Correct. now with uh, you know one of the biggest issues, I guess, the sort of belief in the crypto industry was that by having paper futures, you're sort of creating... Uh, new Bitcoin, uh, in a sense, you're allowing people to benefit from the Bitcoin market without actually touching the asset. 
And I think that now with BACT coming out in hopefully the very near future, we can see uh, actual physically settled Bitcoin futures, which will uh, more, you know, have a direct effect on the market. And like you said, uh, uh, futures are, are always a great indicator of a market health. Well, that's my background. And, you know, I remember when being in the trading pits in the 80s, one of the first things you do in the morning is go get um, your, the sheets, open interest volume and see what things are doing and why. And it gives you an indication of what the um, underlying market, you know, the underlying breadth behind the market is. So I still do that. And, you know, we have futures involved. That's it's the trends from the lower left to the upper right is not a bear sign. It's a bull sign for institutions. And we know what that means, like you mentioned. So Mike from Bloomberg, officially a Bitcoin bull. Uh, what can we say about the potential here uh, that I find very interesting? And yes, it's quite a bit speculative, but what would you say could happen? What are the possibilities for both gold, which I know you've been analyzing for a very long time, and Bitcoin, which uh, you have less price history on? We've never had Bitcoin during a recession. Uh, but what are the potential outcomes for something like a Bitcoin, which is tremendously more volatile than gold? Uh, what would, uh, s s let's just suspend our disbelief here and imagine that we do have a economic pullback in both the stock markets as well as, you know, real estate markets. Uh, what, what could that mean for, you know, an asset like Bitcoin uh, or gold? I guess you could start with gold and maybe then we could extrapolate based on uh, ratios to Bitcoin. Cool. Well, I, I look at gold's mission right now and bitcoin has a mission and as a strategist my view gold's mission is to take back the 2013 decline uh and the peak then was around um 17 um 1700 so to me that's just a matter of time um and i don't it needs it's going to take something significant to end that so here you see that in this chart i'll make sure i you don't have to tell me again to maximize it like I forget sometimes, but I see here, it started to do it. Here's 2017, the highs around 17. I think it's taking that out. And the macro is the key. The bottom line at some point should be a peak in the U.S. trade weighted broad dollar, which I can show you later. And that's not happening. That's unlikely to happen with the Fed ease. And I say that because it's somewhat of a moxymoron because it's not easing enough. The mm. rest of the world is being more aggressive in creating accommodation. And that's something I want to show you in another chart. But for now, gold bias is up. And I think the mission for... Um, for Bitcoin is to take out or to, to, re, to basically retrace last year's bear market. Now, that might be a little bit longer term. And part of what I see, as I can show you here, is um, the drivers. Um, one is in this aqua color. That's Fed fund futures. That's the Fed switching to ease. You don't need to know the actual levels other than that's the trend. In gold, we have gold rallying. This is a weekly chart. Bitcoin recovering. The significance also, though, is in magenta. You can see my little arrow there. Yep. That's the relative underperformance of the Bloomberg Galaxy crypto index. And to me, that's what trends should continue. And that's really started last year with the advent. I mentioned Libra earlier. Stable coins. Tether. People, I think, are starting to get it. A lot of these coins are bogus. I want to I have to use the proper term. Just in, you know, that that's that's media friendly, um, that are bogus, and the space is very dicey. And there's only one digital gold, that's Bitcoin, it becomes more so every day. So that overall market, I can't, you know, I, I have to be honest, I don't see it really having much upside in the broad market, but Bitcoin having the upside, partly because of what's happening with macro, and that is the, um, the I can show you one chart on macro, I'll show you Fed French futures, here's a significant one on the macro, and that is, if you're holding a, a currency that doesn't pay interest, which Bitcoin gold doesn't, and you have all $13.2 trillion in the world of investments and bonds that are now negative yielding, that's what you see in that little white here, that's just, a, it's a Bloomberg index that shows negative yielding debt, that enhances the value of stores of value like Bitcoin. So let's, uh, I think that's a, a great time to start shifting into this conversation of what is a negative uh, yield and how is that, you know, predictive. I'm going to show as we edit this uh, a chart that shows how right now the sort of the delta between the 10 month, uh, the 10 year and three month uh, uh, bond rates or in the, in the, the yield curves has now taken, uh, it, it's below zero, essentially it's negative. And that is, as I understand it, a, a very significant predictor of market instability. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're pulling it up. I'll definitely lay it over the chart here um, yeah. and maybe even do a little interstitial uh, explanation of it. But how would that, you know, mixed with, you know, the Fed pr predictive models of recessions, 
how would that, uh, you know, how has that impacted the price of gold? Like what kind of uh, different multiples would you expect for gold? Would it, is it just to take out that high or could you see it, see it going to new all time highs? I think it's supposed to eventually go to new all time highs like Bitcoin. And I hope it doesn't because um, but I can't see what's going to stop it from doing so because typically when gold rallies like that means other assets aren't performing well, i.e. the stock market. Um, and I hope that doesn't happen, but I don't see what it's going to take to stop, partly because we can look at the drivers. And one of the key things I want to bring out in this conversation is the dollar, the trade-weighted broad dollar. I'm going to bring up the chart of that in a second if I can't find it here. And that is um, the Bitcoin and gold are both – trade in terms of dollars. So if the dollar weakens, they should go higher. If the dollar strengthens, they should go lower. And the dollar is still very strong. Um, and I, I don't know if I can pull up a chart on that real quick, but that um, relationship is at some point should, you know, and once the dollar peaks, you know, it should be um, really shift a lot of interest in right now, gold and Bitcoin. Right now, gold is still, um, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's just catching up. But you have the dollar. I'm going to pull this up another chart to make sure we have. We have the trade weight of broad dollar near um, – it's near the highest ever, UST. Let's just, just pull this real quick. UST, WB, trade weight of broad dollar. I'm going to just do a long-term chart. It's near the highest levels ever. So it's going to keep rallying. It's going to keep going higher, unfortunately. But you have to look at big picture. I mean most people in Bitcoin, you hope you don't have a one-year time horizon, which is bringing us up to 1973. 1973 is when this started. Oops, 1973. And – I think, uh, I think you did two nine seven three. Oh, really? I can't even add. Okay, one nine seven three. So you back. What's how you spell, Mike? So here you see the issue. This trend is your friend. It's continuing higher. It's been consolidating here for a while. Fed easing is supposed to be a thing, catalyst to make to go lower. It might not, but at some point when this trend ends, which I can't predict which, and when I think it's going to continue higher, that's when you should really see a pretty substantial increase in the value, the dollar value of gold and Bitcoin. It just, it's going to be a while, but the fact that gold has been rallying quite well during dollar strength, and Bitcoin is too, to me, just a sign that these markets are looking ahead to the end game for a dollar rally. Yeah, that's that's quite an interesting point there. I mean, I don't think you know, people don't understand there's a lot of these predictive models around a million dollar Bitcoin. But of course, that would have to mean that there has been a tremendous amount of degradation of the U.S. dollar. If you're measuring that in, in U.S. dollar, there has to be a downtrend in the value of the U.S. dollar. Is, is that correct? But typically, it's also unique how you measure it because the U.S. dollars are a back, basket of currencies. And that's why I like to point out there's only one and now two unique currencies that are not anybody else's liability. That's gold, always, maybe mm -hmm. silver to some extent, and some other precious metals, but Bitcoin is joining that space. And that's why I wanted to point out in this chart, you can see track when a dollar peaks here, gold bottom, um, and the dollar bottom here, gold peaked. Now, Bitcoin is similar. It's just catching, it's, it's just, you know, it was in the early, it's the maturing, more of a maturing market, but um, it's, the significance is we're getting this global race to the base. And that is, you know, we're having cutting here and see much more stimulus in China and Japan and Europe, um, which might decrease the value of those paper currencies versus the dollar. But when they're all declining together, what's the only way to really measure them? Gold. What's the best way? And Bitcoin. So that's to me the foundation. But overall, they can still, Bitcoin and gold can still do well because the whole world of paper currencies is getting this bit of this race to the base. They're all cutting rates, as I showed you earlier, 13 trillion of negative yielding debt is significant. And uh, I think what you're saying is tremendously, tremendously important. And that's that when you see the trading behavior on the gold chart, you're looking at it as a, a hedge against the US dollar, against sort of traditional uh, currencies. And then, you know, obviously, when you look at the discussion about digital gold being Bitcoin, we don't really know how much gold there is in the world. Uh, it's very difficult for me to send Bitcoin, uh, a, a little lump of gold into Amazon and have them send me uh, my, a new pair of shoes. There's a lot of things that gold doesn't do very well that Bitcoin does very well. There are some things that gold does do very well, like uh, you can wear it, uh, that Bitcoin doesn't do very well. Uh, but I'd argue that the uh, sort of macro implications of gold um, and, and the way it's traded during especially times of recession make Bitcoin look like it. there is a tremendous amount of underpricing going on with this asset and that when you look at there just being 21 million Bitcoin in the world, uh, it, it becomes clear that for it to even match the current market price of gold, it has a long way to go 
and that if over time uh, these market managers, hedge fund managers, uh, they they start to prefer an asset that is based in code and mathematics and not based in um, sort of emotional ties to what people may or may not consider valuable uh, and and beautiful jewelry. I think that there is a potential that that we might see Bitcoin uh, eat up a lot of that market. Uh, and potentially even overtake gold in the future. Do you think there is a possibility that that could happen? Oh, sure. Certainly a possibility. Um, it, 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 we just got to put ourselves sometimes 10, 20, 30 years out. And we're not, we know digi digitalization isn't going backwards. Um, but I know that I have to be kind of careful with because I'm kind of, I guess I, it's hard for me to speak that. I think that long term, just holding for a year sometimes is hard. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I think especially if you're overweight, if you got buy too much, and I always buy too much when I'm wrong, and always too little when I'm right. But I think most of us can relate to that. So here's just a, a chart I want to been trying to bring up on gold, where the significance in Bitcoin is just like this: the dollar is limited upside; it's still trending higher, mm -hmm. and the stock market volatility has got limited downside, which is both typically are very positive for gold and more so Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very exciting time. I know that the first time uh, we spoke, you were looking for uh, Bitcoin to come down and actually match the per ounce price of gold. Uh, yeah. I'm not hearing any of that conversation yeah. now. It sounds like you've released that. Um, released. <laughs> yeah, it's been released. Uh, well, you have to have targets, and I thought it would get there, and then I switched. You know, and that's just part of my history. As a strategist, sometimes, as you know, even people like Soros and say that, even Keynes would say that his quote was, "Well, when the facts change, you change, sir," and that's what happened. The facts change, so I have to change, and I have to be quick. Now, I remember I just got quick bullish so fast it may just have to be astute. You got to be ready to flip. And correct, you know. and and uh, you know the trends your friend until the end, and so you know saying that it's a bear market <laughs> when it's a bear market, and then you know in, in cryptocurrency we go from bear to bull to back to bear. Uh, in a matter of days. And it's important that, you know, people watched a video last week and we were bearish. Then we broke, you know, in a few days, we went from 4,000 busted through 6,500. And that's very bullish. And so you have to now give the news, which is that we're now bullish again. Um, and people don't like that. People don't like how fast this goes. They, they don't like how they get used to one set of facts, they get used to one uh, environment, and then it changes. But that's cryptocurrency is the economy at a digital speed. And uh, it's pretty amazing to see that we could be looking at a third parabolic run uh, in the space of 10 years, which I don't know, have you have you seen any any asset class perform three parabolic movements in one decade? Um, no, that's it, 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 that obviously rare. I, I, I like to look in the big picture and stay away from the day trading. I suspect, you know, you know, I only switched from bearish to bullish once this year so far, and I hope that uh, it doesn't switch again. But then you have to re, be responsive and say, okay, the market's getting a little bit oversold, a little bit cheap, you know, for the traders. Um, but no, this is obviously in the case. It's just so unique. You have to adjust. Okay, this is a new asset class. It's global. It's gaining traction from institutions, and I think the key thing for us to think about and our viewers is what's it going to take to end this or switch it back? To me, that's more significant. Right now, also the arguments I hear are not compa as compelling as the interest I'm seeing to continue to rise. Although I think what ideal, what I would like to be the most helpful for Bitcoin for me as a long-term outlook is for it to continue to consolidate. Back and fill, we should call it a trading pit. So we had a great move, back and fill, build a base. And these sharp parabolic rallies, we knew the 14,000 was a bit too much. Um, build a base. The longer we kind of consolidate, the lower volatility gets, the better for the space and better for digital gold. Uh, I agree with you. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, fill the gappers, you know, especially as I've been much more of a follower of TA, believer in TA over the last sort of, you know, I guess probably like 12 to 18 months. As I've seen, you know, there's something pure. There's something, there's no CEO of Bitcoin, you know, and whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is, we're never, I, I sincerely hope we never find out because there's nobody coming out and saying we've got a big release coming of a new iPhone and, and that all of a sudden sends the, the markets up or you have some event, you know, uh, a news event. Obviously, there's regulatory concerns, but for the most part, for the most part, the, the fundamentals, the TA on Bitcoin is fairly pure. You have a lot of people all around the world looking at the same charts. And I think the, the news has had much less of an impact on the market um, in recent times as simple looking at, uh, you know, price targets, you know, TA fundamentals or I guess technicals, not fundamentals rather. And then once certain levels are broken, everyone goes in the same direction, uh, whether it's up or down. And yeah, it seems like we filled almost every gap on the CME charts, and uh, I, I guess is the prediction we're going to continue to do that. 
Yeah, well, I, I'm kind of skeptical sometimes with some of that because um, just having been beaten up many times by widely watched things. <laughs> but, you know, hey, it, I don't disagree. I mean, like I, here, here I show kind of just keep your eye on this upward sloping moving average. That's the trend. Um, one thing I think is significant is what I show here is the highest correlation. I look at this every day. The highest correlation I found with history of Bitcoin prices is the is adjusted transaction, the 10-day average. And I get this from coin metrics. And we're getting more in the terminal, but I get it from there. And here you see this trend this year. What I wanted to do is show you the last time we had similar situation. Um, just to give you an indication is because I kind of had a hard time quantifying this properly. Markets turn, transactions are strong. So I don't want to see that really change. And then as far as gaps, yeah, you know, the problem is sometimes if everybody watching it, yes, it can be self-fulfilling. But and oftentimes we all go down together. So here's the same chart from 2015. The significance of 2015, again, this is weekly, was October was the big month. That's what put in the bottom. But as you can see, even before we got to October, which bottom, transactions already started improving. Now, this is a 10-day average. Mm -hmm. And we got to a point where, you know, the market was getting a little bit pricey versus transactions. So all I do here is use Bloomberg's G-chart auto scale function, scale function, which really helps. The difference is, I take this chart off, the difference is now, look at how we're doing. The transactions are leading prices. And, yeah, that could come back down. But overall, I, that's kind of trends I want to see um, and for the shorter term. And I need reasons to see that end, so I guess. Uh, so so you're you're now uh, you're seeing the bullish scenario. We're not seeing so much of the bearish scenario. Uh, let's extrapolate on just giving just to give a nice round uh, sense of what what could a best case scenario look for for Bitcoin completely retracing to new all time highs after new all time highs. Uh, there's no chart data to let us know where to go next. Um, you know, what would you see Bitcoin as as still having a bull trend past 20,000? Obviously, that would mean incredibly bullish things for the space. But obviously, a lot of the big believers in Bitcoin see more the original gold price target as not correlating to that per ounce price, but the market, the, the total market cap price, meaning we want the amount of liquidity in the Bitcoin market to match that of gold, meaning we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. Um, would you, you know, is that, is that something given your logic that you've laid out that is possible over five, 10 years, you know? Well, I, I fully appreciate that question and I get it and I've expected it from you. For me, I love to cross that bridge and I should say if we get there, but I think it's going to be more when we get there. I just don't know when. So I'm going to worry about that later. For now, I'll focus on what I think the market's doing and why, and that's just retracing the bear market. I think the thing was we need to be logical about this and responsible, and there's no, virtually no way we're going to get anywhere near the appreciation velocity of the past. It's just gone too far. I mean, you start at a penny and you trade where we are now, 10,000 or so. Sure, that's going to be, well, now it should be much slower, much lower volatility, and that's why we have to adjust and see, and every day is different. But uh, yeah, uh, let's cross that bridge when we get there, and I should say if, yeah, but I still think it's going to get there. I just don't know when. It might be this year. It might be a couple of years, but I don't see what it's going to take to not go there. Uh, to not end up going, are you talking to, not, to, to previous all-time highs or, or yeah, a market least, cap of gold? Get there. I mean, no, no. Yeah, the market. I, that I don't. I'm not. Seven trillion dollars. It's kind of hard to get my hands around that one. Still, I've been talking to economists about it. But um, let's put it this way: if we can sustain above nineteen thousand, then I might go there. But it's an if statement. It's going to be a while. And like I said, as a strategist, I'm just not. I can't look that far ahead at the moment until I see more significant signs. Now, Libra is helpful, I think, because I see Libra as win-win. It might not get through regulation, but it emphasizes how unique Bitcoin is in every way, shape, or form. Because there's just no, it's like gold. It's just, there's no one's liability. It's, it's whoever owns it. I mean, it, it's, there's Correct. no go government entity like any currency, even Libra. There'll be let regulation. So it's, it's, um, it's the most beautiful and pure thing we've done ha here in the computer science world. And, and it's hopefully <laughs> going to stay that way. I agree with you yeah. completely. And, and just so, for something that for our users to really salivate or our, or our viewers to really salivate on, uh, we're saying it's a potential here to retrace all the way to the previous all-time highs. And then after that, the narrative towards potentially eating up a market cap of gold becomes something that you would be uh, open to considering. Yeah, let's get there first. One, let's get to that bridge. Right now we have, uh, we have to, <laughs> it's a battle. I mean, so it's a war and there's a few battles ahead of us. It's okay. I'm pulling you over here onto the, onto the, the, the Jedi side here. Uh, <laughs> little by little, we're converting you into a, a long-term bull. And that's great. Uh, the, significant, the significant this year is we won a significant battle, market bottom, and it's had a good reason to 
do bottom and appreciate. So, but we got a few more to fight through resistance and it should take time. The longer it takes, the better, I think. The longer we just back until slowly. And possibly, you know, what we've seen is even better indicators of market health, of an asset health, is not about its, uh, you know, uh, blow off top, uh, sort of FOMO driven all time highs, but it's market lows. And if you look at the market lows on Bitcoin, you can see an amazing trend uh, from previous cycles that the market yeah. lows are tremendously, you know, exponentially higher than they were uh, each and every time. And so looking at market lows is definitely something that I encourage everyone to do. Uh, it's easy to look at the highs, but the highs can be almost convoluted pieces of data because you're looking at, uh, you know, a real sort of velocity that, that throws everything out of whack. But then once things come down and you get the level headed real market making industry sort of shapers, uh, the market makers, you start to see this is really where we're not letting this asset fall any lower. And that's extremely important. And seeing that over $3,000 Bitcoin, that is a very significant thing to me of seeing, you know, our last market low was around, what was it, $200, maybe even less than $200. Um, right there. Yeah. About 185. Yeah. $185. So from $185 as a low on our last cycle to $3,100 as, as the, uh, the new low. So yeah, you're looking at like a, 16, 17 times uh, the value of, of the asset. Uh, and that's in the minds of the most, uh, probably the biggest investors in the space. So that's pretty exciting to me. And then of course the previous market lows are maybe even too too nascent, too young of a space to even consider. But I like to look at those because th that to me is really, a, a, you know, the, t the highs are going to throw off the data, but the lows, I feel like that's a much more calculated uh, piece of data than, than the highs. Yeah, agreed. The problem is we all know this now. And when you were here, we didn't know that. Yep. Um, and that's when it's a known known and people expect it, then it generally doesn't happen. So, uh, and of course, market was so nascent here. I mean, future started here. That was 2017. And now it's a whole different world. But um, I just expect the pace to slow down with the trend to continue. I, I agree with you. And usually the longer the, the longer the bear, the longer the bull, correct? Uh, yeah, usually, it's, it's, we call it time price corrections. Typically, you take those, what takes in, in, in horizontal and convert that to vertical. It, that's standard tactical stuff. So, you know, we've now put in the longest bear market. It was officially the longest bear market as, mm -hmm. uh, as of uh, February or something like that. And then once we now made our move up, um, I believe that if we hit our all time high uh, within this year, we'll be looking at a faster turn from bear to bull than a previous cycle. Is that correct? Because we put in our, our bottom here in late, oh, 20, sure. late 2014, and we didn't reach the $1,000 price target again until uh, pretty much uh, January 2017. Or, um, well, I, I just calculate last time it took, looks like about 14 months or so to make out, take out the new high. And here we're, you know, we're not that, we're one, two, three, actually it was a little longer than that, but it took a bit longer. Let's see, it was almost two years, 2017 from 2000, there we go, 2013, 2017, so four years. And here were two years. So yeah, yeah. that would be really quick, but you know, we'll, what I'm would that, that what would that, what would that indicate to you if we're in a, uh, it's supposed to go slower, right? We're supposed to take longer. What if we hit an all time high uh, in a smaller time frame than the last cycle? Would that be meaningful to you or would that still be just oh, sure. an indicator yeah. of a nascent space? No, sure. Well, both. <laughs> That's the both. thing. <laughs> you know, I'll cross that bridge if we get there. But at the moment, it, it, just looking at it with just those two factors, sure. It'd be, yeah, still nascent, still too volatile, uh, kind of scary to be digital gold, more speculative, going higher, get it. But. I, I'm, you know, my bias this year is going coming in was becoming digital gold, and I can't. I, I, I think it is. I just need you need lower volatility for that to really pan out. All right. Well, I think we've gotten the 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 juiciest and most bullish statements we can get out of you today, Mike. We'll have to check back in and see how things are going in a couple of months. Uh, I certainly want to thank you uh, sincerely for coming on the channel and constantly sharing your uh, your wisdom and your experience with uh, the FUD TV audience. Uh, and yeah, do you have any final words for the FUD TV viewers? Yeah, well, I want to thank you for your contribution to, for, to the space. I mean, we all the more education and knowledge, the better for all of us um, to learn more about this just exciting area. Thanks a lot, Mike.
Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I certainly did. A big thank you over to Mike McGlone at Bloomberg. We certainly hope to have him on continually over the next few months to years as this market develops. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, if you got value out of it, please throw a like on this video and leave me a comment in the comment section below and we can continue the discussion there. As usual, I'm Elio Trades. You're watching Flood TV and I'll see you very, very soon on the next episode.